Hello and welcome to Raising Reef. I'm Rob Shaw and in this video we're talking phytoplankton. What is it? Why is it a good idea to dose it to your aquarium? And how can you start your very own culture at home? So what is phytoplankton? It's a microscopic biotic organism that photosynthesizes light from the sun and uses carbon dioxide to create energy and oxygen. It's responsible from between 50 and 85% of the world's oxygen and therefore sustains almost all life on this planet. I like to use it in conjunction with a refugium to supply a constant, varied, renewable and natural source of food for my fish and corals. One thing I will point out is if you are struggling to control nutrients in your system, adding phytoplankton is a source of nitrate and phosphate. Although it is living, there is a chance that this may increase your nitrate and phosphate levels in your tank and therefore could add to the issues you're already having. However, if you are on top of your nutrients and you've got a stable reef tank, adding phytoplankton will probably be the best thing you've ever done. So let's get on to how I culture phytoplankton at home. The species of phytoplankton that I culture is Nanocrylopsis and it is believed to be one of the best ones for culturing copepods and rovers. So in order to recreate the environment at which phytoplankton thrives in the wild, you will need something to put the phytoplankton culture into. I like to use these dosing containers. Uh, they're sturdy and they hold enough of the liquid. They also have a lid with a rigid airline built into it that allows you to inject the airline into the bottom of the culture. You need to do this because phytoplankton isn't free swimming, it is at the whim of the tide, so it floats around in the water and if there is no flow, it will settle out on the bottom. If it settles out on the bottom, it will compact and start to die and it won't be able to photosynthesize. So we use an airline to create some bubble flow towards the surface, which creates an updraft and keeps those cells suspended. So being photosynthetic, you're also going to need to light the culture. And for this, any light will do, pretty much. I like to use these LED strips. They're convenient, they're cheap, they don't use a lot of wattage, and I can just attach it to the side of the culture bottle with a couple of cable ties. So a container, an airline attached to an air pump, and a light is pretty much all of the hardware you're going to need. Other than that, you're going to need a star culture. I've just taken this one out of the fridge. So we can use some of that to get a new culture going. And you're also going to need some fertilizer. This is F2 fertilizer, and one mil of this will culture two liters of phytoplankton. So it goes a long way. This bottle holds about 250 mil. Um, I keep it in the fridge. I don't know if you have to, but I just give it a good shake before I use it to make sure it's all suspended. Basically, as far as I can tell, the ingredients of this are gonna be nitrates, phosphates, vitamin B, um, possibly some silicates, and these are the, all the things that a phytoplankton needs to grow new cells. So, and you're going to need some freshly mixed up salt water. I have some here. It has to be uh, freshly mixed salt water, or at least salt water that has not been used for anything else. You can't take water out of your tank. Um, there's likely to be other organisms within the water column that you'll be adding to the culture. If some type of pod life gets into the culture, there's a good chance it will be eating the culture as quickly as you can produce it. If any algae spores get in there from your tank, there's a good chance that they will grow all over the sides of the container and you will end up with a complete mess. So let's put these things together and show you how it works. take some of the um, some of the phytoplankton as you can see phytoplankton this particular species of phytoplankton is a nice dark green color and we can use this to make ourselves a new culture We will add freshly mixed salt water so we know it's as sterile as possible. You will have cleaned the container beforehand to make sure everything is clean. 
and therefore you can be confident that when your phytoplankton starts to grow it is actually the phytoplankton that you're trying to grow in there. So let's attach the light. I like to use a couple of cable ties to do this, easily taken on and off as needed. Secure that in place like that. Pop the lid on. Well, before we pop the lid on, we'll add the fertiliser. We just grab a uh, A syringe. We've already, shake, we've already given this a good shake, so all we need to do is take out the required amount. Now, like I said, the F2 fertilizer, this particular one, I don't think they vary too greatly, but one mil of fertilizer will culture two litres of phytoplankton. I've got one and a half litre container here, so about 0.7 of a mil should be plenty. If while culturing this phytoplankton it starts to change colour and goes a bit yellow or brown, it's starting to starve and it's running out of fertiliser. By adding a little bit more of the fertiliser you should be able to turn that around and it should quickly turn back to a nice dark green colour. The longer you leave it culturing, and it remains dark green, the more of the fertilizer is being used up, and the optimal goal is to use pretty much all of the fertilizer up to culture it, and then it's ready to store in the fridge and use as and when. So let's pop this lid on. Plug in the airline to the air pump. Plug in the light and and there you go. As you can see, we've got flow keeping the cells suspended. We've got light for the cells to photosynthesize. We've added our fertilizer and that's pretty much the, everything we need to do. There is just one more thing to consider when culturing phytoplankton, and that's that it's temperature sensitive. I've found the optimal temperature to culture phytoplankton to be around 20 to 25 degrees, and that seems to yield very good results. If it drops too low below that, it will slow down the process, and if it gets below 5 degrees, it will go into hibernation, meaning it will become dormant, it will stop photosynthesizing, and it will wait for conditions to improve to then start up again. We use this to advantage in the way we can keep it in the fridge for upwards of six months and keep it still alive and we can use it to dose our tanks and then use it to start a new culture again. I've had phytoplankton in my fridge for upwards of a year and I've still used it to start a new culture and it's still alive. Albeit in a much diminished state and not as thick as it originally was when I first stored it. So all that's left for me to do now is popped back in a week so you can see how it's getting on. So it's been a week since we first set up the culture and as you can see it's gone nice and dark green. It's ready for harvest and at this point we can either split the culture into multiple vessels and start this process again or you can take what you've done, put it into a container, store it in the fridge and give it a shake a couple of times a week and it should be good for at least six months. I've started cultures that have been in the fridge for upwards of a year and use that phytoplankton to start the culture all over again without any trouble whatsoever. So as long as it's kept refrigerated and given a shake every once in a while, it will stay alive and you can then use it to start the new culture. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you've learned something. If you did, hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and leave me a comment if you have any further questions about what we've done here today. If you feel inspired to start your own phytoplankton culture, I've left links in the description below so you can pick up all of the items you'll need to get your own culture going. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, take it easy.